about Jiu Jitsu? Dean Panis for Top MMA News. What you're looking at right now are the hands of the thrash machine, Tim Haig. Tim, we're eight days away from your fight coming up back in the UFC. Um, those hands are becoming very famous over the last few months. I know your last couple fights got cut from UFC after a disappointing show against Joey Beltran. Come against Zach Jensen. After a rough start in that fight, you were able to walk through him. Travis View, who I thought was a very tough fight for you, you were able to dispose of him rather quickly. And after that, the UFC came calling. Why don't you walk us through exactly what happened after those two fights and, and where we are today? Sure. Um, you know, I was always in Joe Silva's ear. I wanted to make sure he knew that I was serious about coming back to the UFC. So, <clears throat> excuse me, got myself in, in uh, good shape and uh, knocked Jensen and Travis View out quickly. And uh, Joe Silva and I had been texting a little and uh, he texted me after the Travis View fight and said, hold off on any contract signing. I might have something for you. And a couple days later, he texted me a new deal for four fights. <laughs> Now, your last, this is your third go-around with the UFC. First time in, you definitely deserved the shot. You know, your record proved it at the time. Very good first fight against Pat Berry. Uh, come back against Todd Duffy, and I've said this before, that's the most confident I've seen you, not counting the last couple fights. You look very confident going into the cage that night. Stuff happens, you got knocked out. Your next two fights didn't go very well as far as conditioning-wise went. Um, both those fights, you're, you're in a position to stop the fight, in my opinion, and both times in the third round, but you weren't able to. I think a lot of it had to do with conditioning. I look at you now, and I see a different mindset as far as when it comes to, to the conditioning side of things. I know before you wanted to be like 285 when you fought. Now I see a guy that's more comfortable being about 255. Yeah, that's correct. Um, I plan on weighing in about 255 to 260, and my fight weight shouldn't be up much from there. Uh, and you know, I just after I got cut the set, the after the Beltron fight from the UFC, I came home and did some soul searching and uh, really thought about what I'm doing this for. And uh, basically, I'm doing it all for my my son Brady and my wife Bree, and to provide a better life for them. So, uh, if I'm gonna make a, a real run at this, I better be in good shape. So, uh, here I am. I'm glad to hear that because you hear a lot of guys talk about. You know, I'm doing this for everybody else. I think that's a lot of BS. Bottom line is you are fighting for yourself and fighting for your family to make a better life for you guys. Sure, you got a lot of people behind us, or behind you. Um, you're not going down there to fight for us. We are there for you. And I hope you feel that way going into the fight. Fighting back in Edmonton gave you a lot. I could see it. I was there for both those fights. Zach Jansen had you in trouble early. I think you drew a lot from the crowd. Fighting back in front of your hometown last couple of fights, have you found that confidence? Oh, definitely. Uh, and, you know, I keep going back to it, but it all comes from being in shape and <clears throat> just having the, having the will to win and just thinking about my son before the fight and even a little bit while I'm in the, in the cage or the ring. And, uh, you know, it's, it's all for Brady, so um, it, just, it just pushes me, pushes me harder and never quit. And it's just the will to win. Now, I know the fight is just over a week away. Um, you're sporting some, I don't want to call it jewelry, but you got a purple belt around your neck. Yeah. Kyle Cardinal presented you with that this evening. How does that make you feel? Oh, it's awesome. Uh, I feel very excited and happy, and I feel more confident already. So uh, hopefully that shows in the fight, and, um, you know, I'm, I hope I can prove myself at a purple belt level. Not only the purple belt that you received today, you also reached a personal best when it comes to training. Now, it sounds like a guy that's peaking at the right time. Uh, not only physically wise, but mentally you seem prepared. I know you're bringing down uh, some lady luck in your corner. Uh, Shara's coming down with you in the corner. Yeah, exactly. My strength and conditioning coach, Shara Vijant. Every, every time I step through the door to her uh, fitness studio, uh, I'm a little bit scared. But it's, it's a good fright because I know she's going to push me hard to, uh, to a new level. And uh, today was nothing different. I just set a personal best on one of my cardio exercises. And uh, actually, I blew away my old, my old record. So I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, yeah, she's got me more than ready for the fight. Now, it's fight for the troops, UFC fight for the troops. Um, Matt Mitrion, 
uh, broke in. People start to get on through the Ultimate Fighter when he was in the same series as Kimball Slice. Coming out of that series, a lot of people didn't give him a lot of respect when it comes to the fight game as an ex-football player. What do you know about Matt Mitrione and how are you viewing him? Uh, he's a really athletic guy, picks things up quickly, and he loves to scrap. He loves a war, so um, I'm expecting the fight of my life, and hopefully it's fight of the night. So, you know, uh, fight of the night and knockout of the night would be nice to bring home for my family, but uh, a win is even better. So I just, you know, I just hope I win. When I first heard this, the signing for the fight, I was very pleased for you because, first of all, they gave you notice, unlike the Joey Beltran fight, which you took at short notice, you kind of did them a favor. But they gave you almost a full three months to prepare for this fight. Now, when I saw it, I'm like, why would they give Tim Haig, who's coming off three losses, Matt Mitrione, who's coming off three straight wins? And I don't think that they are feeding you to Matt Mitrione. I almost look like they're giving you a hell of a shot here against him. Uh, Business-wise, I don't know how marketable Matt Mitrione is, to tell you the truth. They put him in there against Big Baby. <laughs> they put him in against Kimball Slice, some guys I thought that they wanted to build up personality-wise. I look at this as them almost giving you a chance, and I know you've been in their good books. I know your first interview with Joe Rogan, how much they loved you down there. They keep talking about you all the time. I'm actually thinking they're giving you the proper opponent. Well, we'll see. Um, I've prepared, uh, prepared more than enough, I feel, and... Uh, you know, if Matt Mitrione takes me lightly at all, it's going to be a tough night for him. So, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll and uh, hopefully show the UFC that uh, they've got a marketable, uh, talented, and exciting fighter in Tim Haig. Well, I've definitely seen an attitude change. Uh, no more Mr. Nice Guy. I know that come cage, come, come time to fight. I talked to you last year, and I said, what does the UFC want with a boring white guy from Canada? You seem to be kicking that to the curb. I know I've seen a lot more emotion out of you in the ring uh, in the last couple of fights been in the ring. I expect the same thing in the cage. We mentioned it as fight for the troops. This is not only about the American troops, it's about the Canadian troops as well, and I know you're walking down there with somebody else behind you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I've got a big supporter in woundedwarriors.ca. Uh, everyone should check out that website. It's, it supports uh, soldiers who have fallen victim to injury. Uh, and I'm just so proud and so honored to wear their patch in my fight. And uh, thank you very much to uh, Wayne from Wounded Warriors and Jay McMillan. Well, Tim, I said it before, you're not there for us. We're there for you. On behalf of everybody at Top MA, uh, Top MA News and across Canada, we'd like to wish you all the best. And we really look forward to seeing the best out of you and seeing you get a chance to do one hell of another interview. Thanks, buddy. For Top MA News with Tim the Thrash Machine Hague, I'm Dean Panis.